Welcome back to another chess game analysis video. So today I want to cover a very nice game that a friend of mine called Siki played in a classical game. And the game features a very nice opening that I have not yet covered on the channel called the Larsen opening. Uh, starting with B3, a very exotic opening that I think I can recommend to people because um, not a lot of opponents are very nicely prepared for this and Probably no one knows theory on low to mid level, so B3, a very nice weapon to use for when you don't want to uh, study too much theory and just want to have a couple of principles in mind and surprise your opponent. So this is also probably why Siki likes this opening very much with white and plays that a lot. So we have E5, one of the main responses, also D5 is possible. So we have Bishop B2. Um, so the opening relies on this very nice bishop here, obviously, um, which you don't want to block and which is going to very nicely control this diagonal for the rest of the game. Knight c6 development e3. Now you try to have the um, pawns on dark square so that your light square bishop can out, can get out. d5, another pawn in the center. At some point you need to attack black's nice center with white. Bishop b5, now development, bishop d6, development, knight f3, development. Now, uh, bishop g4, development and pinning the knight. I think white's decision is probably correct here to immediately ask the bishop, the bishop a question. With h3, do you want to trade yourself off for the knight on f3? And black should not lose too much time in the development. Uh, and don't, he shouldn't get behind too much in development, so he decides to take you. Bishop takes f3, queen takes f3, knight f3, uh, knight f6, development. And now immediately you can strike in the center. Um, this is basically one of the signature moves of this opening is to strike in the center with c4. But you can also play it a little bit more slowly with d3, preparing your knight to come out. a6, now asking the bishop a question and Bishop now can't retreat anymore because you have committed yourself to d3. So you have to give it up as well. B takes c6. And now both players have a knight pair and a bishop pair. But black has a worse pawn structure because of this isolated... Not, not isolated, but it's a backwards double pawn, which is not that nicely. And we're going to see that this is going to be a problem in black's position later on in the game. And I like white's next move a lot. Knight d2 development not um, restricting your own bishop on this very nice diagonal, even though the engine says that knight c3 is also an option here in this position. But then it's a little bit questionable, why is this bishop here? You don't want to block it in um, if you don't have to, knight d2. We have castles and castles from white, a very solid approach, castling the same way as your opponent. And when I saw the game live on the board uh, in a very similar position, I thought maybe it's possible to long castle, which would have more been my style, but it's not better according to the engine. It's a little bit questionable. Um, with the idea of after like queen e7, g4, knight moves back, and then you have h4, and you can bring the rooks onto the king side and try to attack with these pawns that are very far advanced already. Um, I think it would have been probably more my play style, but it's not better. It's minus 1.5, so the engine already says black is better. And with white, you first need to actually prove that you have an attack, which the engine says that after a move like bishop a3, now forcing a bishop trade, um, white doesn't really have an attack. So I just wanted to show this very quickly, that not in all positions, long castles and attacking on the king side is actually a valuable, um, a valid approach. So. I just think it's an interesting one if you play very aggressively. In a Blitz game, I would have definitely played this, but um, I think short castles is the more solid approach here in the position, just trying to outplay your opponent step by step and not forcing any attack just yet. So we have Queen e7, uh, connecting rook c4, the signature move striking in the center. It's also possible to play e4 here and have a, a central pawn in the center immediately because black can't really capture the pawn because of knight takes e4, and now you're really left with a backwards double isolated pawn, which is very nasty. And the engine even says, without being down material, you're just 
plus 1.5, so. Um, you can't, black can never really take on e4. So e4 would have been an alternative, but c4, the signature move, or one of the signature moves of this opening, a good move. So in the game, bishop a3 was played, which is an inaccuracy. I think the best way for black to actually prove that this position is equal is to either bring the rook into the game, or you can even, even play a very nice a5 move here and trying to attack here with this um, magnet pawn on the rim of the board, trying to destabilize white's pawn structure. I think this is also a very nice approach, but bishop a3, yes, you're trading off um, the very nice dark square bishop, but the queen is a little bit misplaced on a3 anyway, so this is probably already a little bit better for white. Rook fd1, um, a nice centralizing move with Duke. An alternative would have been to play rook fc1 with the idea of now threatening to take yourself um, on d5 and opening the c-file for rook, which is already there. So the backwards isolated pawn in black's position slowly but surely becomes a weakness, which can be attacked and exploited. So I think this would have been an alternative, but rook fd1 certainly a good move, centralizing the rook. It's always a question like of what's your play style, how do you want to play the position. A lot of moves here in the position are very nice for white. It's just a question of setup really. Rook fd1, uh, rook fd8, centralizing the rook. And now I like this move a lot, queen f5. So the whole pawn structure of black is a little bit strange here with these undefended pawns in the center and the double isolate, the double backwards pawn on the c-file. Um, in f5, I think a nice move improves the queen, brings it closer to the center and closer to the black king. King d, uh, queen d6, now trying to hold on to the pawn. Knight f3, a nice move, insisting on winning this e-pawn. And now it's really questionable already how you actually defend the pawn. Black chose to advance it and trade it off for white d-pawn, which happened after d takes e4 and knight takes e4. So... Now, it's already very difficult to actually play this position correctly with black because you still have an undeveloped rook here on a8 and white can develop very naturally rook d for uh, preparing a rook lift. Now, rook e8 was played in this position, which is a little bit questionable. I think the best defense for black is actually to play g6 here, kicking the queen. Queen e5, forcing a queen trade after rook e8. Now white can force this queen trade and take the d-pawn. c5, rook c4, blocking the c-pawn. And now white is up a pawn, but you still need to somehow play this position with white and prove that this is actually winning because I don't think that with best defense this is won. So hard position here to defend already with black, I don't think... Would be interesting whether or not a uh, player of the black pieces would have considered this variation and trying to hold the draw with being down a pawn. But he played rook e8, which would have allowed a very nice combination here with c takes d5. g6 now kicking the queen. Queen f5, f4. Queen takes f4, e takes f4. c takes d5, rook takes d5. Where we have an improved variation of... Um, the variation that we've seen before now, uh, white again has a pawn advantage, but um, still there is an isolated c pawn, which is very weak. And I think this is an improved variation with white. This is much more, it's much more difficult to actually hold this a draw with black. So rook e8 and inaccuracy that could have been punished with c takes d5 and going into an endgame being up a pawn. My friend Siggy played uh, knight g5, trying to trade off the centralized knight, which I understand. And here again, you see the position is quite tactical already. Um, also strategic, you need to really carefully decide where to go with your pieces. So this, first of all, attacks the pawn and somehow attacks the knight. So you need to be careful and the best defensive move in this position is actually knight f6 going back and defending the pawn. But play with the black pieces here, trade it off the knight, which leaves white with a comfortable position, I think, after queen takes g5. 
Rook e5, I like this move a lot, trying to activate the rooks, attacking the queen, queen g3. Now, looking into the direction of the rook, the queen and the c pawn, which is still backwards, and we're going to see why this is going to be important later on in the game. Queen, G, uh, queen f6, trying to somehow get out of this pin. Rook a d1, the doubling now on the d file, which was prepared all along. You need to be careful here with black not to take this c4 pawn because after rook takes you again left with this terrible pawn structure and if the queens and the rooks are going to be traded off this is just disastrous to hold in the end game white is winning here so you can never really take which is nasty for black because you kind of have to wait until white captures or you just have to hold have to hold this tension in the center, which is somehow uncomfortable. H6 is also the ancient suggestion here, trying to make breathing room for the king, but rook f4, the rooks are coming into the position and it's getting harder and harder to play without this rook not participating in the game. But I think black somehow tried to force an attack or tried to force the issue with rook g5 attacking the queen and somehow lining up against the white king. Problem is just that it blunders this backward c pawn, and white is just up a, um, a clean pawn here with no compensation whatsoever. Queen e6, a nice trick trying to uh, win this h pawn, which in this position you don't need to give up. King f1, simply playing it safe, you're up a pawn, not allowing any counterplay, and this is just a one position, I think. Um, also, because again, this tension now can't be broken by black uh, because rook d8 just wins the queen on the spot otherwise it would have been checkmate and you're going to win this end game pretty easily so queen e6 a last attempt but um, king f1 would have just secured the win on the spot um so siki play c takes d5 which is inaccurate but it still holds a very um good advantage for Black, even though black can win back with queen takes h3, the g pawn is pinned. So black wins back one of the pawns, but white is still up a pawn. And queen h2 just defends everything. And I understand play with the black pieces now playing queen f3, which is a blunder, trying to hold the queens on the board, which you normally try to do if you are down a pawn in an end game. You try to make it as complicated as possible, holding the queens on the board. Here in this position, Maybe from a theoretical point of view, it's correct. the correct idea, but here it just doesn't work. I quickly checked with the engine, which uh, Stockfish recommends queen takes h2, trading the queens, king takes h2, and after c takes d5, rook takes d5, you trade off rooks and pawns, and now you just, uh, this um, king side is just equal and equal, and you're up a pawn here on the queen side. Um, this would have been uh, the possibility after the queen trade, going into this endgame, trying to hold this as a draw with black. I'm not so sure uh, how I, how comfortable I would feel converting this position into a win, and I'm not sure how I think he would have um, uh, played this position out if he came here. Um, I think a very difficult position. You just need to know what you're doing here in this rook endgame. It should be winning, definitely. But it still needs a couple of moves to play this out. Queen f3, however, ends the game more quickly because it loses another pawn. D takes c6 and this c pawn is already very far advanced. H6 making a breathing room for the king, which is too late now because c7 just... Everything is very nice in harmony. The queen defense checkmate here constantly also kind of looks into this direction. The pawn's very nice, doubled. And on an open file, which control very nicely, and the pawn which can just walk the queen. Rook c8, blocking the queen. And now um, you can play it a little bit technical. Rook d8, trying to... You can never take here because of pawn takes queen. So it's a little bit tricky. You can play it with rook, um, rook d8, check king h7, and... Very quickly here, you can't uh, take the rook here because uh, queen takes d1, checkmate, and you're being checkmated. White also has a little bit of a background issue here, keep that in mind. So 
the queen always attacking this rook. White also needs to be a little bit careful. Uh, you would need to play, uh, instead of taking here, you can just play rook c1 and defend everything. And now the threat is just to take here. And black can't really stop this very well. So, um, Ziggy played this a little bit differently, more calm and collected instead of just immediately rushing in for the check. He played uh, rook c1, defends the pawn, and now this threat is just unstoppable. You're up two pawns in this endgame. And black doesn't have compensation for the pawns whatsoever. I think a very nice technical way of winning this endgame, which was not that easy to play in my opinion, but I think um, a good game which illustrates very nicely being up a pawn is nice, and especially when the opposing uh, the opponent's pawn structure is ruined as already of like move ten this backwards pawn. It's always an issue. Especially when you can't take here because you get an isolated double pawn, which is very hard to actually play with. I think Siggy converted this position very nicely into a win. And in general, I would really appreciate if you sent me your own games to analyze. I would be happy to analyze some games for you that you played, or maybe you have a favorite chess pro that played a game that you enjoyed very much. Also, when the opening is very interesting, this time it was a little bit different with the last one opening i have not analyzed something like that yet um make sure to check out my twitch and my instagram where i sometimes post something and live stream see you in the next video i hope you have a nice christmas and new year's eve see you bye